This is the best tote bag sewing tutorial you never knew you needed. Hi, I'm Emma from Studio 77. Welcome back to my sewing channel. So I know that's a bit of a big claim about it being the best tote bag, but just hear me out, okay? It's quick to make, it holds a ton of stuff, and it has a secret sauce that I've not seen on tote bag tutorials before. So I'm gonna show you the tote bag in a minute, but why is this tote bag special? So if you have small straps on bags that can dig into you when any kind of weight goes into the bag, by widening the straps, you can carry more groceries or shopping or whatever you need to put in your bag. I promise you, it's not a tricky make. It requires no hardware. And honestly, the hardest thing about this tote bag is cutting it out and the circular base. But don't worry about the circular base. I'm going to show you the best way to do it so that I find it easier, so that it works out well. And also the main thing about this bag is it doesn't require extreme accuracy. So don't worry, just go at your own pace. You've got this. So the bag has only two pattern pieces to cut. You do need a fair amount of fabric due to it being a wider strap and the way that it's cut in one piece, but you could also adjust it to have a seam in the top of the strap of the bag if you needed. You could add fabric paint to it. You can make it really cute by using a Cricut to add text or images. You really can make this cute as well as super practical. But before we jump right in, I wanted to highlight that this bag is also the perfect bag for for a trip to the beach. Hang on, a beach trip in October in the UK. Well, the reason why I say this is because there is an awesome campaign that starts right now on October the 29th. It is called Team Seas. Hundreds of YouTubers headed by Mr. Beast and Mark Rober are coming together to save the oceans by taking, wait for it, an astonishing 30 million pounds of trash out of the seas. Yeah, 30 million pounds. So for every dollar raised, one pound will be taken out of the sea of all that trash and plastic that doesn't belong there. How awesome is that? So head over to teamseas.org to find out more and let's make an amazing impact on the future of our planet. Be sure to like and share this video with your sewing friends so that the community can come together and we can see this amazing feat happened. Right, so back to the tutorial. If you have any questions or queries, do comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. You're going to need any kind of woven fabric for this bag. I'm using an old curtain, so I really recommend you recycle something for this bag. Anything that's big will work, as such as an old sheet, or like I say, I'm using an old curtain. As long as it's not stretchy, anything will work. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. So to start off with, you want to fold your fabric into four like this, with the folds at the top and on the right hand side. Measure from the right fold 32 and a half inches and mark with a friction pen. Or you can use chalk too. Mark 14 inches along from the left mark you just made. Turn the ruler and mark 11 inches down from that mark and also 11 inches down from the left edge mark. Draw a line from your very first left edge mark down at a right angle to the top fold. Connect the left bottom edge to the mark you made earlier, 11 inches down and 14 inches across. On the right hand fold, mark three and a half inches down the edge. Also mark three and a half inches down further over to the left. Turn the ruler and match up these two marks, making a line that's eight inches long from the right edge. Extend the ruler and make a mark that follows this line that is underneath the earlier mark you made, 14 inches from the left. This is purely to make the next stages a little easier visually. Going up from the bottom edge you drew earlier, make a mark that joins the last mark at a right angle. Then you can join the bottom edge to the 8 inches edge with a curve. Don't worry if it's not a perfect curve, as long as it's visually nice it doesn't matter too much. Now 
Lastly, cut through all the four layers. You'll be pleased to hear that that's the trickiest bit of the cutting. Now for the base. You want to cut two of these pieces, so have your fabric folded into two rather than four. Draw a straight line that, that is 11 inches long down from the left edge, and then draw a line at a right angle to that that is 15 inches long. Then line it up and make it into a rectangle. And cut out these two pieces. Fold these rectangles in half lengthways and mark a curve on the raw edge of one end that is roughly four inches up and across from the edges. Cut along that curve. Fold the piece in half again, mark out that curve and cut out the other end. Now you've got two of those bases cut. Use this as a template and cut out another of this shape in fusible interfacing. I used a medium weight, but this could change according to your outer fabric used. It's a lot down to preference rather than science, so play around with interfacings till we get the right amount of stability that you like. Fuse the interfacing to one of the base pieces. And then base the two pieces together a quarter of an inch from the edge all the way around. Moving on to the main part of the bag, take the piece we cut earlier and match up the short edges on each side with each other. Fold the two side seams together to meet and make a mark in the middle on both pieces. Take the base piece that you've just stitched and also mark in the middle of each side by folding. Back to the main section, lay the seams so that they are lined up and stitch along each seam half an inch from the edge. I've overlocked my edges as you can see, but you could also zigzag the edges if you don't have an overlocker. Then open up the bag so that the seams are facing each other. Take your base and match up the middle of the long edge with the seam that you've just sewn and pin in place. Repeat for the opposite side and then the middle of the short edges to match up with that mark that we made earlier. Flip the whole bag over. Now you should find that the rest of the fabric goes into the curves with just enough ease. Even woven fabric will ease a little when it's cut on a curve, so you should be able to wiggle and stretch the fabric into meeting these curves. Now you'll notice that I am pinning at a right angle to my fabric rather than following the edge of the seam and this is so that I can sew over my pins. Now this is a bit controversial I know but as long as you go slow and steady you are able to sew over pins. Definitely recommend the smaller pins for this, you could of course clip it as well if you wanted to, whatever your preference. But please don't be scared of these curves, just go slow and steady and make sure that you're not getting puckers by moving the fabric as you go away from your needle.
So you want to sew all the way around that edge. Like I said, I'm sewing over my pins, as you can see. I'm just tweaking the fabric as I go and making sure those pins don't flip out, as you can see they did. They're being a bit naughty. So I just put them back in and then you can stitch right over those pins. And like before, I'm using an overlocker on my edges just to make sure that they don't fray, but you could use a sewing machine zigzag as well. Over at the ironing board, the last thing we need to do is we need to turn that edge of the strap. So you want to iron it over by half an inch all the way around that long edge. And repeat that on the other side. Once that's all pressed, you want to fold it in again so that the raw edge is encased and stitch along those two edges all the way around. Now you can pin this if you like or you can do it like I do and just fold it under as you go at the machine. And so there we are, there is my bag that's made from an old curtain. I really hope you love this tote bag as much as I do. It folds up so nicely so you can take it on your travels or like I say, down to the beach. Don't forget to head over to teamseas.org and check out the amazing campaign. I really hope we can all meet the target. Coming up on your screen right now are some more tutorials that I think you're gonna love, including this classic lined tote bag. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next video.